Good morning, I'm Eric Shambarger, Director of Environmental Sustainability for the City of Milwaukee. Uh, thank you for joining today's presentation on the Milwaukee wind turbine. Um, this is a great story for the City of Milwaukee and sustainability, um, and it's, it's really become a, a symbol for clean energy on the lakefront. So we're excited to give you about the history and talk about our next moves on, uh, on re renewable energy for the City of Milwaukee. Next slide. Uh, wind power is the largest source of renewable energy in the nation. It supplies more than 10% of our energy usage. And, you know, they're increasingly an important part of our clean energy future. Um, basically, how they work is they harness the power of the wind and convert that uh, the blades of a turbine uh, are powered by the wind. They turn to produce uh, electricity, and we take that electricity and, and put it into the grid. So the big, big wind turbines, um, that are out there, the farms nationally, um, produce enough power for up to 100,000 American homes. Um, and we'll talk about our smaller wind turbine here at the city of Mo at the city of Milwaukee. Next slide. So when we talk about wind turbines, there's a lot of different scales. Um, and so in 2012, we we partnered with the Port of Milwaukee to to build a mid-sized wind turbine. Uh, it's a Northern Power 100 kilowatt, kilowatt wind turbine at the Ports Administration building. And this uh, graphic kind of gives you a sense of the scale. So on the left side um, are the big utility grade turbines uh, that are out there. Um, you'll see these in farm fields. Those are can be 350 feet tall or as, as high as a Milwaukee Metropolitan Sewerage District smokestack. Uh, you can see the Bayview Terrace there and the home bridge. And, the, the wind turbine that we installed is just to the right of the bridge. It's about 154 feet tall and uh, produces a good, a good amount of power. It produces enough power to uh, provide all the electricity for the port administration buildings. Uh, you'll often see a lot smaller um, turbines out there as well, such as the one near Discovery World. Um, those, you know, those are nice, but they don't produce as much power. Basically, the taller you get with wind turbines, the more power uh, they can produce. Um, but sometimes those really, really large ones are not appropriate for an urban environment. Uh, next slide. So how do we pick the port of Milwaukee? Um, well, the main reason is that it's on the shores of Lake Michigan, which is uh, a very uh, good wind resource for the uh, within the city of Milwaukee. It's hard to do a lot of wind around uh, city buildings because of the turbulence that tall buildings can provide, but being close to the port, um, you know, was a, a good spot. So we also um, needed to have enough clearance around the the site so that if for some reason it fell, which it's not going to fall, but it, it can't, you know, be in the path of roads or other things. So we had to find um, a spot with enough uh, radius around it. But another big reason was how visible this thing is. So if, if visitors are coming in from Michigan on the Lake Express Ferry, the wind turbine is one of the, the first things that they see about Milwaukee, and so it's a really powerful sign of Milwaukee's and its clean energy future. Um, it's located on city property. It doesn't block any views from downtown or, or Bayview. And again, it's a really great wind resource uh, within the city of Milwaukee. Next slide. Uh, this project was funded with the American um, ARPA, American Recovery Plan Act, which was the stimulus under President Obama around uh, 2012. And uh, you can see the installation and the progress here. This was a US made wind turbine. Uh, Northern Power was the company. Um, we'd also made sure that the steel and components were manufactured uh, in Wisconsin to comply with the Buy America provisions. So. You can see it being installed and then the end product there in the middle bottom of your screen next to the, the port administration building. Next slide. You know, one of the questions you hear a lot about uh, wind turbines is do they kill birds? And I think there was probably some early examples of wind turbines in California, particularly um, some of the early ones were in the paths of birds. And so they did, you know, um, have some some implications, but in order for us to get our project installed, um, we had to get approval from the Fish and Wildlife Service. And basically, the the research that we did is that these small scale wind turbines pose little if any threats to birds. 
So they are um, too tall for to hit small uh, songbirds, and they're too low to hit migratory birds. So they really, you know, pose um, not much threat. I think tall buildings themselves um, kill more birds per year than wind turbines with birds flying into glassy uh, tall buildings. Um, so we felt pretty comfortable that uh, we weren't going to adversely affect uh, wildlife uh, with this project. Um, and uh, again, this is not in the path of migratory birds and it doesn't doesn't uh, pose a risk to them. Next slide. Another consideration that we heard from people was, is this thing going to be really noisy? Um, and the fact of the answer is no, you can hardly hear it at all when you go down there. Uh, there's not a lot of moving parts. I mean, yes, you have the wind turbine going, but there's not a lot, you know, a big engine uh, in there. So it really doesn't produce a lot of noise. Uh, when you go down to the port of Milwaukee, you hear the uh, the traffic from eight or 794 a lot more prominently than the wind turbine itself. So it's it really just sounds like background noise. You can hardly hear it at all. And um, it's only you know, 55 decibels, and which is not even as loud as being in a car. So uh, it hasn't been an issue. We haven't received any complaints from residents about it being uh, unsightly or too loud after it was built. There's plenty of questions about it before it was built, but after the fact, um, really re have we received no complaints about it at all. Next slide. Another um, odd concern that we had to address was, is this thing going to drive people crazy with the flicker? Um, some people thought that as the sun's there and this, the winds, you know, the blades are turning, that it would create a flicker effect. And so we had to do studies on that, believe it or not, and, um, you know, had a third party engineering firm look at that. And there was no uh, meaningful disturbance uh, from this flicker effect. So again not a major issue at all um, but these are all the due diligence that we we had to uh, to get this project completed next slide so after 10 years the impact of the project's been great it's been a really great positive sign for clean energy in milwaukee it provides more than 100 percent of the electricity needs for the port administration building and then we sell the surplus uh, back to we energies um, so this makes our uh, the port administration building the first uh, net zero electric energy user that the city has had in its portfolio. Uh, since 2012, the wind turbine has generated over 1.4 million kilowatt hours of clean power. Uh, the net savings on this uh, are have been approximately 200,000 over the last 10 years, so we're well on our way for the investment to pay for itself. And um, it, it shows that we're not only supporting this project for this one building, but we we support the the wind industry generally. Um, and again, believe it's part of the uh, path to uh, clean energy future at large. Next slide. So we often get questions about, well, why aren't you building more? What about um, building wind turbines in Lake Michigan? And although we have no immediate plans to do wind turbines in Lake Michigan, we thought it would be um, a useful thing to study. So um, this past year, we teamed up with graduate students from the School of Freshwater Sciences. They were looking for a project and, you know, one of our principles at ECO is to um, try to apply science and work with students uh, on public policy issues. And so this partnership with, with UWM was a really uh, great opportunity to do that. And I thought the students really did an excellent job. They looked at other offshore wind projects um, on the East Coast and Gulf Mexico. Um, and looked at what it would take to do something similar in the Great Lakes. Um, you know, they, they pulled research from the National Renewable Energy Lab that talks about how offshore wind could generate three quarters of Michigan's electric use by 2050. And so the natural question is, could that also support um, the same kind of uh, carbon neutrality uh, in, in Wisconsin as well? And I basically the report found that, yes, building wind turbines in Lake Michigan is feasible. Um, they looked at how far out they ought to be for optimum wind performance, but also to reduce um, concerns about them being un unsightly. And basically, uh, they're proposing that if you locate them further enough out, they can be um, small enough to not, not even see them, um, but also provide a sufficient amount of power. 
the issue is, is it cost effective relative to other uh, forms of energy? So at this point, the answer is probably not yet. Is, they're not uh, cost effective relative to other things. And so at this point, we have no current plans to do offshore wind, um, but we are instead focused on uh, major solar projects. Um, and so that's where we're pursuing now, but we have shared this report uh, with the state of Wisconsin's Office of Sustainability and Clean Energy to inform uh, future considerations. I mean, I think as we go forward and, the, and there's going to be a lot of trade-offs we have between land use with solar projects versus doing bigger projects like this in Lake Michigan. And so uh, in the future, uh, this kind of report could be helpful to policymakers. Next slide. As I mentioned earlier, we are um, making major strides on solar uh, as part of our renewable strategy to go along with the, the wind turbine uh, project. Um, we have currently completed a 2.25 megawatts solar array next to General Mitchell Airport on a city-owned landfill. That's right on College Avenue. And we just got approval uh, last week from our Public Works Committee to build an additional 11 megawatts of solar. And those solar projects combined with the wind turbine and other previous solar projects are enough power to help us achieve our 25% by 2025 renewable energy goal. So that is a huge win. This 25% by 2025 goal had been on the book since 2009. <clears throat> and fortunately, over the last 10 years, um, a combination of technology advancements, the cost coming down for these things, the uh, Federal Inflation Reduction Act, and new partnerships with We Energies have made um, making renewable energy a real possibility and have allowed us to achieve that 25% by 2025 goal. Uh, but we are not done. We are um, in that same resolution. We have a, approval to look for additional sites to do enough solar to get us to achieve our 100% renewable energy by 2030. That will require further Common Council approval after we have sites lined up. But I think this first project to get 11 megawatts done is really going to set the stage for those future projects. From an equity standpoint, we have negotiated that uh, all these new solar projects have local hiring requirements so that we are putting Milwaukee workers to work as we build these things. Uh, they're going to be good paying union jobs. And uh, so we're excited that this clean energy revolution is finally coming to Milwaukee in part through the leadership of ECO. Um, I'd like to give credit to my predecessor, Matt Howard, who um, really had the foresight and leadership to help us get that wind turbine built. I was the project manager at the time in the office, um, but I think his vision to to be bold with that project, despite the um, you know concerns that were from the residents, you know, kind of taught me that now that I'm in a leadership role, that we have to be bold and. Um, you know, answer questions and listen to the public, but also take take bold uh, action as well. So the wind turbine played a great role for us and uh, has launched us forward to achieving our 100 percent by 2030 goal. Um, I'd also like to call out um, the, the port wind turbine. Um, such a great project. There was actually a children's book uh, written uh, by, by Katie Meyer. I put a link to it in the chat if you want to check it out on Amazon. But uh, it really tells the story to kids about the importance of clean energy. And so uh, we are so thrilled to see that. Um, touching again on our, our solar projects, this is an example of the uh, pr proposed solar project next to General Mitchell Airport. So to orient you, uh, we have the existing uh, solar array that was commissioned in 2021 at the top of that landfill. And you can see the proposal for what is going to be built in the next two years. Uh, just to the north of that picture is the, uh, the Air National Guard's base. And so we are uh, fortunate to have their cooperation as well. So the next time you fly, if you fly at, out of General Mitchell Airport, look out your window and uh, see if you can see Milwaukee's uh, solar project. Next slide. So that uh, concludes our presentation on solar and uh, wind power for the city of Milwaukee. We have a great lineup of um, future presentations on a whole range of sustainability topics uh, throughout March and into April and May. So check those out and please do follow us on our uh, newsletter and, uh, and social media. 
it is so important as we approach Earth Month um, this this year and beyond to really embrace climate action, to understand that the city has a role to play, our utilities have a role to play, and each and every one of us has a role to play uh, in the choices that we make, uh, as well as um, using the programs that are available to us to start getting off of fossil fuels and, and start investing in clean energy because it's so important from a climate change standpoint. We have to cut our fossil fuels. And I know it feels great sometimes in you know, uh, March when it's 70 degrees out, but that really um, is a warning sign for us that the climate is in fact changing. And um, it's not so pleasant when we have smoke and other, other challenges coming from wildfires in our city. So we have to do more on climate change and this is a great uh, recipe to do it. So again, follow us on social media and we look forward to uh, additional engagement with the community and uh, lunch and learns like this uh, going forward. Thank you so much.